expensive. That's why great early coins in, in, in really high grade and original condition with eye appeal, they sell like Monet's and Van yeah. Gogh's. They just go through the roof. Yeah. So yeah. There's just not many of them around. Yeah. That's cool. Going forward, you got involved in kind of grading. It was in 1986. So did you make a determination that you were gonna only buy graded coins? Cause it's still, it caught on very quickly. It did. But you would still go to like major auctions for another five or 10 years. And oh, yeah. most of the stuff was still raw. Right. Did you did you switch to kind of mostly buying graded coins or? Um, I, I, I have just uh -huh. because I like the presentation. I like the protection that sure. the, the holders offer. Um, you know, they're, they're, and at that time, you know, Anax was still doing some, sure. I guess they still are. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. I guess they are. I haven't used them in a long time. You know, they had that little mini cachet or whatever yeah, the they call that. Slab, yeah, the little mini slab, yeah, little white slab, yeah. And then that really was kind of before mm -hmm. PCGS, but, but you know, back then when you'd send a coin to Anax, it, it, because they were, you know, small, sure. and it, it took forever to get them back, and yeah. you know, they just didn't really ramp up. Right. Um, but they did, they were a great service, and they mm -hmm. did a good job. You know, there probably wouldn't be a PCGS, or PCGS would have come along probably a lot further if there right. wasn't an annex. And I think they yeah. probably looked at yeah. that and said, okay, that's a, that's a, a great idea, mm -hmm. but they're not doing it to the to the full extent. Yeah. We're gonna make this, a we're gonna do it yeah. better. It was like a courtesy to collectors almost. Yeah. And then I think it caught on so well then like other dealers, cause you know, I worked in a coin shop when I was a kid from 13 to 18 in Florida and we submitted all our best coins to Annex, right. you know, before PCGS came out. Yeah. So, you know, there was a huge demand and that's, I mean, PCGS just filled like a, a, sure. a huge void, yeah. a huge void. And then and then the grading services, a couple others popped up, mm -hmm. you know, and then now the, the two big ones are PC and NGC and mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty much strictly a PC guy mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. I, I think they grade to a little bit different standard. Sure. That, mm -hmm. To me, I just, I prefer the slab, the mm -hmm. PC slab. Mm -hmm. I think it's a better presentation, sure. so mm -hmm. it's a better product in my mind. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty much 99% PC. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and, and I like, I, I, you know, I, it's not that I don't trust my ability to grade a coin or mm -hmm. wouldn't buy a raw coin, because if I see a great raw coin, I'll buy it and mm -hmm. submit it. Mm -hmm. But it's already submitted in, in yeah. the case. So I like to buy already graded coins just because it's fully packaged. Yeah, ready and to it go, takes yeah. a while. You know, the process takes a while. and. And yeah, there's a certain amount of risk too. You know, you're sure. not, maybe you're not near as good as you think you are at grading. So and your own coins are automatically have to go up a point. Yeah, your ownership adds at a point. At least a half yeah. a point. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. Ownership always adds a point. Yeah, for in sure. In some cases, a point. But mm -hmm. so yeah, that was that was. Uh, I I think it's a great thing for the hobby to have the grading services. I think mm -hmm. they do a great job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just can't imagine being a grader for the grading service and. You know, I think it'd be great to be able to see all these great coins, but at the same time, you don't have time to really appreciate it. You know, you've got yeah. product to put out. And I, you know, I, I think you're right on that, but these guys are hardcore coin people and they're true numismatists. I think maybe they come off the pedal a little bit when something really cool comes to the grading room. Yeah, I, mean, I, can, does, I can just yeah. see them going down the hall. I mean, hey, yeah, you gotta see like, this. Hey, they hey, walk around, walk totally. around the totally. Yeah, for, for yeah. sure. I mean, That would be cool. Yeah, because you know some graders, I know some graders yeah. you know, on a personal level from years ago, whether they were graders then or not, but they're all really into coins. Yeah, and, and they usually they start coins. out as collectors and, yeah, and yeah. or part-time dealers or right. dealers and end up as graders. So. It's not a factor, you know, it's yeah. still, you know, the human element and hey, this is what we've seen. So, so now let's go into the 1990s, you okay. know, so you've, you know, you're buying kind of more graded coins then. So how did your, you know, you know, you built your first two previous sets in the early 80s, your Merc Dimes, your Stanley Liberty Quarters. How, how have you progressed? Like what type of big mistakes did you make and what were you kind of honing in on? Um, because hmm. <laughs> we all make mistakes. Mark. Yeah, I know you got a couple. Oh, I I, I so. can't think of any real serious mistakes. Oh, I really can't. Okay, all right, <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously, uh -huh. every now and then you'll uh -huh. buy an overgraded coin. Uh -huh. I think I bought a whizzed coin once because mm. because it, it looked to me like the, you know this quarter is it's a seated quarter and one side looked mint state, the sure. other side looked like a full blown cameo proof, and mm -hmm. then I sent it to Anax. This was early on. I sent it to Anax, and they uh -huh. they sent it back as you know hey, this coin's been. Whiz, and I, I didn't know what whizzed was yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. You know, then, then I. So the, those of you who don't know, whizzing is really a. It's really a process that was primarily done in the '60s and '70s, yeah. when whiter coins, non-tone coins, became more popular. It's almost like they would take a wheel, like a wire brush, yeah. to the coin, and really just go all over, and it kind of looks like a tinfoil look to it. Yeah. So if you're not, if you don't really have any experience looking at coins, and you're a new collector, it was just it looks as shiny as, right. as it could be. Right. And so it's called then, a whizzed coin. And yeah. back then, it was like yeah. this is just 
wow, this thing just jumps at you. Well, yeah. if you really looked at it close, right. you'd say, oh, lines. okay, yeah, I get it now. Yeah. Um, All right, so you do have some big mistakes. Though. That's a big mistake. Okay, that's a big mistake. And, and my and, and my my first biggest mistake yeah. was was getting a twenty power loop and trying to buy yeah. coins. And it's like well, not gonna I could never buy a coin. I could never buy a coin. You know, because yeah. that's a big mistake. Every coin has right. its little minor microscopic flaws, right. and you know, right. I'm I'm look like like zooming yeah. in on it. Nope, I can't. No, no, that's not that's not good enough. Well, yeah. Nothing was good enough. So. Right, right, right. I learned that lesson early on. So. What, I, what do you use now? Like I, I, I don't. Generally, I, I just look at a coin and, and evaluate it that uh, way, and sure. then then if I'm really serious about buying it, I might use a three power and just kind of sure, scan okay. it real yeah, quick. Scan it, yeah. And and tilt it in the mm -hmm. light and just see if you can pick up on anything. Because sometimes mm -hmm. in in one dimension, a flat, straight on image, you just don't see the a hairline or sure. a, yeah. a flaw. little mark here, a little mark there. Yeah, yeah. Here, so yeah. that's mm -hmm. three power at the mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless you're looking for a variety or an overdate or something, then you, helps, then you yeah. zoom in a little bit. I kind of use a loop myself as almost like an insurance protection. Like yeah. you're, just, you're looking at the coin, you agree with the coin, but just in case, you know, I kind of divide up the, the coin in quarters yeah. just so I cover it. I just want to make sure I didn't see something. And this that's could true. be a raw coin that we buy in our shop or, you know, a graded coin, you're pretty covered. But I mean, you know, I just don't want to kind of hone down the coin. But I'm like you. Ninety percent of the of my time looking at coins is when they're just without a loop. Yeah. You know. And it, you know, you're looking for eye appeal, and this yeah. coin, you, you had them pull it out of the case for sure, a reason. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it looked good from a distance, and it looks good right here. And, sure. Okay. And and it's and it's graded, so yeah, that's a pretty good insurance policy. Yeah. So okay, so tell me about some of the exciting coins you've had or handled or seen or oh given an impression. Um, you know, you got to go way back now. Just whatever it may be. And the hunt for that particular coin, how you acquired it, is there anything you know, else? Most out? of the really, the really great stuff, aside from like the, the patterns, the 77 patterns and mm -hmm. those kind of coins, which are all great coins because they're really rare. Um, but most of the coins that just weren't bought for a particular set mm -hmm. um, just sort of happened. You know, you're at a show and, yeah. and wow, there's a, there's a continental dollar, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful. And I, you know, I just had to have yeah, it. So sure, I bought yeah, a continental yeah. dollar. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, the Gobrek dollar, a, a name below base Gobrek dollar. Mm -hmm. I was walking past Tony Tarnova's case and he mm -hmm. happened to have one and I'd never bought a coin from Tony before, but mm -hmm. I said, I'm gonna look at that because that's pretty Tony and it was yeah. an attractive coin. I, I have since upgraded it, so I don't have it anymore, but it, you know, that didn't really fit anything. Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't doing a set of Gobrek dollars mm -hmm. then, I'm doing them now, but. But so that coin kind of popped up and didn't fit the bill. It was just sort of an odd, odd coin, and then it got me. Okay, I need to. I need the uh, the original. I need uh, 1838 and Jud 104, and then mm -hmm. the 84 and the 1839 104, and mm -hmm. so you know that you really get it. I mean, it's very technical. I mean, the, the average collector doesn't barely knows about got Gobrick dollars. Yeah, you know, most people maybe even buy one, but you're really getting technical in it. It's your ADD kicking in. Like, yeah, oh, totally. Like, you're just totally, like, okay. I got to totally. get them all and, 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 and come and on it's in. Like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm you know I'm a fifth of the way there to a red yeah. books. Go Brook set, so yeah. you know, and I, oh, well, you know, I got to look for this now. Mm -hmm. um, so th th there's those kind of coins, uh, some pine tree shelling, you know, just, you know, I, uh, when the Ford sale came out, and, it's, and they had a whole bunch of really high grade yeah. pine tree shellings. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, that's that's a great coin. That's a historic mm -hmm. coin. Um, so I had to have one of those. It doesn't fit anything, but it's yeah. it's like you say, you know, you buy just a great coin here and there. And well, so it goes back to when you were a kid, when you first started. You got a red book early. And right. you spend all that time going through your red book. You a see a pine tree shilling. Yeah, you see a chain set. Mm -hmm. and you don't always see nice co examples of those coins around everywhere. So when you see it, it triggers this emotional thing. Like, right. oh my goodness, Having it's a, a pine tree. Yeah, yeah, it's a pine tree shilling. I've always <laughs> yeah. wanted one of those. And here's yeah. why. There's the coin and the price is fair. And you just, exactly. you just go for it, you know? Yeah, or, or like a high mm -hmm. relief saint, you know, um, mm -hmm. that coin to me, at, at, at one point in my life, that was like the holy grail kind yeah. of coin just because I thought it was the most beautiful design. I still do, you know, I, oh yeah, I still, it, it's, I'm kind of that rope between that and the 10 Indian. I like both, both the St. Gaudens designs. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still think the high relief is the, the saints better. Yeah. It's probably my favorite. Coin just too. a little better. Yeah. It's pretty hardcore, but you gotta have one. Yeah. You, you gotta know? have one. You Once you can one. afford it, you yeah. gotta have one. And you know, and I started with a three and I think mm -hmm. now I got a five. Mm -hmm. So, you know, up, Kind of gradually upgraded that because mm -hmm. in a coin like that, the difference in quality r is noticeable in, to my eye. Mm -hmm. You know, it mm -hmm. just uh, it's it's like such a 
it's like it's a metal really mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Ten Indians, I, I love those. You yeah, know, I've been yeah. trying to redo another set of those, and uh, that's not easy, especially now. See, you you run into a lot of challenges because back before, like anything, you know, coins are worth more. There's more coin collectors. Right. It's a lot less competitive back then. Right. And so now you're redoing the same thing. I mean, is it just completely different? Or it's it totally different. Yeah, really? I mean, they're uh -huh. they're you know, there's they're hard it, they're hard to find. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find nice ones mm -hmm. and. There's a lot of common common day coins yeah. of, in that series. Well, not really a lot, but the common day coins are pretty prevalent. But mm -hmm. when you get into the S Mints and mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some really tough ones. But, yeah. But with my gold typeset that I was working on, I had to you know I had to have a wire edge and a rolled edge. So yeah. it, then you know when I'm looking at it and going, well, oh, yeah, I got the, we'll I got a little bit more the four different yeah. types. So yeah. you know I'm on my way to a set. Yeah. <laughs> so then when a nice one come, came, a ni common day 1911 came up, I just uh, you know, I gotta have a real high grade yeah. common yeah. date now. Sure. And so I just started, fired that set up again. Yeah. So I'm, doing, I'm working on that right now. <laughs> You're doing your second set of Tinnies. It's pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, going back through. Uh -huh. I, I never quite uh -huh. finished, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of got discouraged with that because I could never find an 11D that, that mm -hmm. I liked. And there were two coins, 11D and the 33. And the 11D, you know, I just, it doesn't come very nice. Yeah. And then the, the 33s that I saw back then when I was doing that set were had some just huge cuts on them or they, they seemed like the grading standard on that coin was a little different than the mm -hmm. rest of the, the, the 10 Indians. Right. Like they, they, they just were a little more lenient on those. And, mm -hmm. and so I didn't really like the idea that, you know, that's, here's a $250,000 coin and I don't even like it. Yeah. That's important. You got to like the coin no yeah. matter what. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I kind of bailed on that, but, mm -hmm. but now I can afford to finish the set if the coins ever came up, got them. Please yeah. send, send him to Seth, and, sure, sure. and he'll call me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, they, yeah, yeah. So that um, they had a lot of interesting yeah. coins yeah. over the years. Had a lot of interesting coins, and, and a buddy of mine once said, you know, you got to look at it as it's kind of a lifetime type set. Mm -hmm. You know, these are coins that great coins I've owned, and they they provided the capital down the road. You know, a lot of guys say buy it and never sell anything. Well. Mm -hmm. Once you've owned it, you know it's it's the the thrill of the hunt. A lot of times, it's mm -hmm. that's and it gets you driving going. Oh yeah! Now you've owned it, and you've owned it for five or six years, and okay, you look at it and go, "This is an outlier, but it's a great coin." But here's a coin that fits what I'm trying to do, yeah. and mm -hmm. the capital from this will pay for this and that. You know, so so you kind of use it to move it around, to move it around a little bit, around sure. a little bit. Yeah. as your taste change. And and the reality is, we we don't ever really own anything. We're mm -hmm. just taking care of it sure. for the next generation. It's a great way to look at and, it. Yeah. And thank God someone took care of it. For so I could enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. You know, so that's um, that's a good way to look at it. You know, it comes around, goes around. You right. Know, you take care of it for the next generation. Exactly. Yeah. And and you don't really want to leave a, a valuable set of coins to, mm -hmm. to heirs that don't appreciate it or don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to have a, a, a plan. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Contingency plan for what happens if you should drop dead tomorrow. Sure. You got to have have a plan for that and. You get a lot of help from the auction companies for that. They'll, sure, they'll be sure. glad to help you figure sure. that out. Sure. Uh, so anyway, so um, uh, you really been collecting coins hardcore for forty years, and that's rare. Oh yeah. I mean, it really is rare. I mean, yeah. I find a lot of experienced collectors, but you, I feel like you've just been at it. Like you're jumping on planes every year. You're, you know, you're here. We're at the the PCGS Invitation Members Only Show in Vegas, and I think very few collectors come here on a regular basis. We'd like to get more because it's a great show. It is. It's but, a great show. But it's a lot of fun. But um, you know, the the bigger thing is uh, this would be thousands of people that watch this, and a lot of people. I'm just going to tell you, they're going to be like, that guy, Mark, he's cool. He's having a good time. He's smiling a lot. He's yeah. having fun. The stories. I want to be like Mark. So they're asking you, what advice would you give me? You know, if you're a newer collector, just getting your feet wet, and you want to really, you, you're, you want to commit some time and some money to it, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to them? I, I think, I think you know, so I've heard it before. Mm -hmm. Someone said, you know, buy the book before you start buying yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, get a hold. Obviously, if if you're even considering coins, you've probably already yeah. got a red book and you've looked through sure. it and said, okay, I like this series. You know, there's a lot of series in there that I don't care for and designs yeah. that are just pretty dull. But right. but there's some great great designs for if you're going to do a series. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to do a series. Um, mm -hmm. You can do type or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody always seems to start with Lincoln cents and Indian yeah. pennies because yeah. that's an entry level kind of set. Um, it's some grade you can find some grade that that you can afford to put together you know so um, but my my advice would be 
get the book. You know, we've modified, you know, you always, the old school term, just like what you said, was buy the book before the coin. Now it's buy the book slash Google the term. And then, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So it's yeah, all you have, the you have a lot more tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got a lot more tools. Yeah. yeah so you I, complement well, yeah, the book I, with yeah, Google. Really, <laughs> a, a really great resource is, is CoinFact. Yeah. You know, you can go through My there favorite. and yeah. look at some amazing images sure. of coins and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and down the road somewhere, I, I think, you know, you, you can... You can go back and check auctions that it's great for coins in that grade. You can do a lot of research and, and make more intelligent decisions. Yeah, um, and people like Doug Winter, for example, has volunteered his time because you know some of the the, the descriptions of some certain rare day coins. He's written a paragraph or two about the right. coins. You know, also David Akers, they extract the information. Yeah. It's, it's great. So it's like you get a little you get a little history of a particular coin you may be interested in by the expert. You get uh, amazing true view images of like, right. you know, 10 coins in various grades, give you a feel, you get like estimated known, the population report, <laughs> it's, 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 a lot of, yeah. it's a lot of work, it's, it's a great resource. A lot of information it's there. It's good for collectors to dabble around, right. dabble around for sure. And, and, and to a beginning collector, if you ever have a chance to go to a major show where there's an auction, yeah. uh, go. You know, I went to a lot of coin auction lot viewing yeah. sessions without a dime to buy anything, yeah. but went to lot viewing and looked at a lot of coins and, and that kind of gives you an idea of yeah. what a, a 55 looks like and what an AU coin, wow, this coin looks brand new, but it's mm -hmm. an AU 58. Yeah. And if you look at it close, you can see why. Yeah. Um, That's one of the greatest deals in numismatic. It's free. Yeah. Going to your heritage and, and, and obviously stacks and, you know, legend, you know, they all encourage people to look at their right. auction lots. And, right. You know, you could look at anything. It's kind of exactly. shocking that you yeah. could look at millions of dollars worth of coins in one sitting. <laughs> yeah, you know, the high think, dollar box. Yeah, yeah, you know, you show up a little earlier, you know, don't hog all the big coins, but they're willing to answer questions. Absolutely. It's great. And they know that everyone has to start somewhere. So I think it's right. one of the best values because you really learn when you see a lot of coins. Exactly. It's bottom line. Exactly. You know? and, and go to coin shows and, mm -hmm. and look at a lot of stuff in, in yeah. cases. But, you know, the, the lot viewing, they, you know, these auction companies, they're not going to have you check your credit references before they let yeah, you look at coins. Yeah, there's plenty in fact, of they encourage there, yeah. young kids to, oh, they're, yeah. they're delighted yeah. to see kids in there because right. we need more young collectors yeah. in blood. You That's know. also another topic. Um, Alex, you probably don't even remember this. You remember I, I gave a talk to your class when you were in the third grade? Yeah. Yeah, and, and we had Serious. all those coins. Mark actually mailed to me several of those items that we passed around in your in your class. This is like I forgot about this is eleven that. years ago. I forgot about it. Yeah, it was that. great. I really appreciate it. You had you sent us like some paper money, some colonial currency, a couple coins. Okay. It was a big hit, right? It was it was pretty cool. Everyone loved it. Okay, well good. It was like the only time in your life your dad was a little bit cool, right? He, he loved <laughs> it, but probably not really. But it was fun. It was fun. So you know, you and I kind of had that passion. Right. You know, I was obviously started Wintercoin University to kind of provide scholarships for kids. But, you know, it's just important because that's how I came up. You know, other dealers or other collectors kind of took me under their wing. It's, it's really important. And, and when my kids were in school and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, every one of their classes, I, I put yeah. coins in and yeah, just it's good. talk to them about it. Yeah. So what yeah. do you think about the market right now? The market's like I got, crazy right I, now, right? I got no idea about the market right it's, now. It's, it's crazy. It's, Is this, it, it just uh, seems like the... the, the the high end of the market mm -hmm. is just erupted. Mm -hmm. um, the lower lower end is probably not nearly the, you don't mm -hmm. see near the, the price. In fact, some of that stuff may have gone down. Gone I don't down, know. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I don't really follow that area very close. Mm -hmm. But the stuff, you know, it's hard to buy mm -hmm. really nice stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Because you're competing. You know, the, the Simpson sales were a good example. I mean, as a pattern collector, I mean, I was just waiting for this mm -hmm. opportunity. It was, it was great. And, uh, but I was really surprised. The prices were very strong. Mm -hmm. I just figured, you know, dump a thousand patterns on on the market. What's going to happen? Or yeah, you think it'd sell a lot cheaper? You but think you that? Yeah, you think it right just up. the sheer volume. But yeah. boy, the bidding was fierce. You know, I've mm -hmm. maybe bought a half a dozen coins total so far. Hope mm -hmm. to buy some more mm -hmm. at the next sale. But uh, yeah, it, it was pretty impressive. How does this market compare to other markets you've been a part of? Um, How's it different? Oh, geez, that's a tough question because I because I don't understand this market as well. Uh, I, mean, I don't know where I don't know where all this. It seems like there's a lot of money coming in that's not mm -hmm. from collectors. It's more investor oriented, mm -hmm. and I'm not, not not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not really mm -hmm. sure how I feel about that, but um, it makes it tough if you're a passionate collector to, to add co coins to your collection. Sure, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When you're competing with an investor that thinks, well, this is the potential to double and I'm not looking at it like that. Right, you know, right, I don't sure. look at it that way at all. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to lose value, but but I'm not doing it for, to make sure. money. I'm doing it, uh, you know, because I really enjoy doing it. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, and if you happen to make a little money on a coin, that's great. Yeah, and it always seems to be when you buy the best, it always seems to do well over time. Everything goes in cycles. Yeah. But you know, the buying the best. But it seems to me this market's a little different in terms of it seems to be a lot less trading. Every coin that's selling is kind of finding a home. Yeah. You know, so like I know right. they go away. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like don't see it. Gone. You Where don't do see it go? moving around. Yes. Yeah. It shows up once and then yeah the Simpsons sale with a thousand plus patterns and pff, gone yeah it's gone yeah you don't the see it just you don't see that. a ton of those yeah. on, on the secondary market no. yeah mm -hmm. yeah a lot of collectors stepped up and started buying that stuff so yeah and I didn't know there were that many pattern collectors out there so. a lot more now right I guess yeah. yeah I don't know there's a lot more in every series it seems like yeah. I mean the hobby's really growing I mean we see it on you know many levels in our shop we see it on social media there's a lot more people out there that collect coins than what we all know. I mean, you, you, you talk to a friend of yours, a relative, somebody in your town, and you bring up coins. Like one out of two people probably light up and tell a story right. about coins. It's a lot right. more common than what people think. Or they'll say, you know, hey, I've got some coins. And, yeah. you know, maybe you can tell me what I got. That's, yeah. So that's yeah. kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Still waiting for the really, you know, the, the brasher to bloom to show up in, mm -hmm. in somebody's, yeah. you know, sock yeah. drawer. Which will happen, yeah. Which will happen. It'll yeah. happen to you because you have a, a brick and mortar store. Yeah. It's not going to happen to me. But. Yeah. You never know. But maybe I'll give you first shot. There you go. That's how it goes. <laughs> That's cool. But Mark, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I hope, you know, a lot of y'all learned a lot about how you should approach coin collecting. You know, there's pros and cons to everything, but, you know, Mark's got 40 plus years experience of really hitting it hard. So, pleasure having you on Slab Lab. And Thanks looks for having, having you again one day. Okay. All right? Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Bye, everyone. Bye.